Okay, so we're going to be using the definition of the convergence of a sequence to prove that the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over the square root of n is equal to 0. So this is what we want to show. Okay, we want to show that for every epsilon greater than 0, there exists a capital N contained in the natural numbers such that um, n, little n, bigger than or equal to big N implies that the absolute value of 1 over the square root of n minus 0 is less than epsilon. Okay, so um, you have to think about it like this. There's eventually a term in the sequence, capital N, or any n after that sequence, that that difference between um, 1 over the square root of n and 0 is going to be an arbitrarily small number, aka 0, or less than that epsilon, which epsilon is an arbitrarily small, really small number. So that's the basic idea of the limit of a sequence, okay? So first we're going to start off with some scratch work, okay? So we're going to start with what we sort of want and try to find this capital N to put um, for our assumption here. So let's see. Let's go ahead and do one uh, absolute value of 1 over the square root of n minus 0 is less than epsilon. We can see that um, this will be the absolute value of 1 over the square root of n is less than epsilon. And um, we know that um, 1 over the square root of n is going to be a positive number because n is uh, a number from 1 to infinity, right? It's those terms of a sequence. And remember, a sequence um, only has from 1 to um, infinity or however high you go. So we know this is a positive number. So we know the absolute value will spit out a positive number. So the absolute value of 1 over the square root of n will be 1 over the square root of n is less than epsilon. Then what we can do is we can multiply both sides by the square root of n. So we'll have 1 is less than epsilon square root of n. And then we can um, do, let's see, divide both sides by epsilon. So that's in the square root of n, because epsilon is an arbitrarily a small positive number. So it's not 0. We can divide both sides by epsilon. And what we can do now is we can square both sides. So we get 1 over epsilon squared is less than the square root of n squared, right? And we know that this would be just 1 over epsilon squared is less than. So remember, the square root of n squared would be the absolute value of n. But since we know that n is positive, this will, this will just be n, right? The square, root of, uh, well, the square root of n squared will just be n because we know this is positive, this n. Okay, so now we have a good candidate for our capital N. So this is our scratch work. So this is not a part of the proof. Okay, so now that we're done with our um, scratch work, we can actually start our proof. So proof, we're going to let epsilon be bigger than zero and choose our big N to be uh, bigger than one over epsilon squared. Okay, so Remember, for our uh, want to show, we had that little n was bigger than or equal to big N, so we're going to assume that. So we're going to suppose little n is bigger than or equal to big N. So, of course, this implies that little n is strictly bigger than 1 over epsilon squared, because um, if n is greater than 1 over epsilon squared and little n is bigger than or equal to big N, that means little n would be strictly bigger than 1 over epsilon squared. We need to write it like this so we could fit into the form that's comfortable with us. And then we just do algebra, right, in order to get it back to this, which is what we want, right? And uh, I'm not going to follow exactly the algebra we did in the scratch work because um, I don't know. It's just we can do it a different way, right? So we have a uh, one is less than um, n epsilon squared, and then we can do um, one over n is less than epsilon squared, right? Dividing both sides by n. And then we can just do, um, we can take the square root of both sides to get uh, the square root of one over n is less than 
the square root of epsilon squared, right? This implies that um, one over the square root of n is less than epsilon because the square root of epsilon squared would give us just epsilon because we know epsilon is positive, right? Otherwise, um, it would be the absolute value of epsilon. But of, I mean, it is the absolute value of epsilon, but we know that the absolute value of epsilon is just epsilon. So now, of course, this gives us um, the absolute value of one over the square root of n is less than epsilon because we know that uh, the absolute value of one over the square root of n is the same thing as one over the square root of n because we know this n is positive because remember the sequence, um, the sequence like a sub one, a sub two, right? Those subscripts are that n and we know that n goes to from one to infinity. It's basically the natural numbers, right? That's the domain of a sequence, okay? And this implies that this is one over the square root of n minus zero is less than epsilon, which is exactly what we wanted. We wanted to go from n bigger than or equal to big N. So see, n, little n bigger than or equal to big N. And that implies that one over the square root of n minus zero is less than epsilon. And that's what we got. We got from n bigger than or equal to big N to the absolute value of one over the square root of n minus zero is less than epsilon. So this implies that the limit as n approaches infinity of one over the square root of n is in fact equal to zero. And that is the proof.